The way the Capitol Christmas tree occurs is the Speaker of the House of Representatives makes a request to the Chief of the Forest Service for a tree every year. In 2014, the Chippewa National Forest was fortunate to be selected. So part of the selection process for finding the Capitol Christmas tree is having the foresters, along with our engineers, actually go out into the forest to find the ideal candidate in a forest of over a million acres. Trying to find one tree seems easy, but it's also finding a tree that we have access to, that we can reach. And so having folks from Washington, D.C. come out also gives us an extra set of eyes because at the end of the day, the tree's gonna be in their backyard, not ours. So as people can imagine, it might just on the surface look as a Christmas tree, but it really is more than that. It's actually a community tree as well. This is an opportunity for the people of Minnesota to really shine and show off what it is to be Minnesotans, what our culture, our history, our stories, and this Christmas tree acts as a catalyst for that. It's through projects like this that we can reach into those urban populations, those diverse populations that you know not only don't know what a national forest is, but have never seen a tree. So this is the kind of uh, opportunity that we uniquely have with the Capitol Christmas tree and it's really given us a whole nother level of significance and an important part of what I think the story of the Capitol Christmas tree is. The next stop is to find a way out of the forest, no small task. When I learned that the Chippewa National Forest was going to have the Capitol Christmas tree, I wanted to make sure we were working closely with the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. The Chippewa National Forest and the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe share the same land base, and so making sure aspects of their tradition and culture are highlighted when we can, so that expands the understanding of their backgrounds, and it helps us in America understand what the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe's culture is about. One of the ways this tree is giving us notoriety, we're bringing it to the Capitol and saying, have notice of the indigenous people and let us live together and let us do this for the good of humanity. That is what this tree is giving us. It is giving us that time, that moment, to say what we have to say to the world peace. That tree is a symbol that all humanity can be under that tree. It's called the tree of life. And under that tree flowers and protects all humanity. And so this tree is a symbol of that tree of life for all races. We're taking another tree down right behind me. It is the helper tree. We'll use its limbs and its bark to gather around the tree that's going to DC and to keep it company and keep it warmth and to keep it fresh. And we're saying, thank you, big witch, mitig, we do kagejik, the helper tree. Thank you for going along with your brother, the tree, and keeping it warm and healthy. Then it's time to take an ultimate road trip. Can you imagine one big rig taking this tree across the country? They stopped in the Twin Cities at Life Touch headquarters, one of its major sponsors. The Capitol Christmas tree is going to go through a major evolution this year. Life Touch has really stepped up to the plate in uh, ways that I could have only dreamed of in the past. Welcome. As a national company that touches the lives of 86 million individuals annually, Sponsoring the U.S. Capitol Christmas tree seemed like an appropriate endeavor. We are also the proud publishers of this book, which commemorates the 50-year anniversary of the Capitol Christmas tree. So we hope that you enjoy the festivities of this uh, event that's surrounding this magnificent tree and its road to Washington. This is a pretty big deal. The Capitol Christmas tree is a national treasure for a few months that it holds that title. The job of our law enforcement officers is to not only protect the tree, but to also serve as a deterrent to anyone who might want to damage it or interfere with the delivery process of the tree. It was here you began to feel the majesty of it all, with some dignitaries to give it a DC feel. I'm just so thankful and honored to be part of this um, glorious celebration, thank you. What's also a long way is the 2,000 mile journey the tree is about to take uh, as it goes out to Washington, D.C. and it's going to stop along the way in states and it's just such a great opportunity for Minnesota. More than anything on this day, you could feel the sense of anticipation and pride. The trip cross country is roughly three weeks and what I'm also seeing in each of the communities that we've reached out to from Minnesota to Washington, D.C. is an incredible 
excitement and enthusiasm and interest in not only being a part of it, but making their event the best event along the way. Seeing this kind of enthusiasm and the kinds of diverse types of people and, and agencies and businesses rallying around, this is something unique. You don't see it very often. And I think it especially at a time when many of us have become cynical about what's happening in this world. We're all hungry for something that makes us feel good. And I think that without exception, this project will make them smile and make a lot of people feel real good. The last stop, the nation's capital, and no one does pomp and circumstance like D.C. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 50th annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony at the United States Capitol. On the west front lawn, ladies and gentlemen, stands this year's Capitol Christmas tree, a majestic white spruce from the Chippewa National Forest in Minnesota. Uh, to help us light this tree this year, we have a special guest. He and his family are here with the help of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so we've asked him to come down here to help us kick off this holiday season in our nation's capital. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a warm welcome to Aaron Urban. All right, Aaron, you ready? Let's start. Five, four, three, two, one. They were unveiling a Christmas tree to be sure, but it represented so much more. For me, it's a tree that does represent the people of the United States, and it's the people's house. This is the legislative branch of our government that makes the laws and it's representative. And I think that connection, we have so many people involved with this project to make it happen. What's magnificent about it is, is that it reminds us all that we are all one nation and one people joined together in a common cause and a common message to the world about the importance of love, peace, liberty, and freedom. And what a great honor it is for us from Minnesota. And on this night, you felt the journey was complete. Life Touch is about families and traditions, and I think, you know, the tree really represents that. And so I think, you know, it's been a great fit for us, a great connection. You know, it really was a tribute to the American families. Watching that tree get lit today, it, it really was an emotional moment for me. When I thought about the thousands of people that we saw as we traveled cross country, when I thought about all the stories that we now have to tell about what happened along the way, it was bittersweet because in a way I knew it was over, but in a way I knew it would always be with me. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.